Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to present you an opening trap and one of my favorite openings. The Sokolsky opening, also known as Orangutan opening or Polish opening. Even if the opening has never been popular at top level, I really enjoyed playing it when I was a teenager. Back in the days, I didn't have the greatest opening knowledge and by playing first before I was able to avoid theoretical battles, you know. It wasn't about who knows more uh, moves in theory, it was just about fun. It was just playing chess, you know. I played before and me and my opponents both know exactly the same about the opening. Nothing. And yeah, I think if I remember right, then you could even find two games that I played in the opening back in 2001 when I was 13. I guess I played two games in the under 14 German Championship, yeah. And if I remember correct, then I even scored one and a half out of two of the openings. So this was not too bad, even if the rest of the tournament was a big disaster for me. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, the trap that I want to show you, um, I named the Katalimov trap because Boris Katalimov won a game against Georgi Ilyitsevitsky in 1959. So you can see the critical position already on the board. It's right to move and win right at the spot, but take your time. Before we just jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how to reach the position and what Black should have done to avoid to get trapped. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. <laughs> So the game started with the move b4 and black responded with e5 attacking the b4 pawn right away and here white decided to play the move bishop to b2 and now black responded with f6 and I know that this looks probably a bit strange if you're a beginner because if you think about it then the move just weakens the white squares around black's king and you're normally told to not play f6 um, too early in the game but i think that this is the exception and the move is also the third most common move in the position because it just simply defends the pawn on e5 while you're still attacking the pawn on b4 and it's also threatened against the bishop on b2 because now it's even harder for for the bishop to um, gain any activity on the diagonal you know so it's quite a sensible move even if it looks a little bit strange and here white played an even rarer move he played a move e4 this is known as the tartar cover gambit and sokolsky himself once said that this is a promising sacrifice i'm not that sure about it because i guess that if black will play the best moves black will remain with an advantage but of course, uh, in a practical game, um, if your opponent isn't well prepared, um, then of course, why not trying it out, right? Um, in the game, Black decided to accept the sacrifice and took the pawn on b4. And here, White just simply kept on developing and played the move bishop to c4. And now the bishop um, is already attacking the weakened light squares around Black's king. And Black played the move knight to e7. And here comes the queen to h5, check. And now black played the move knight to g6. And I guess that this is a mistake. I mean, don't get me wrong, this move doesn't lose the game. Um, that's not the case, but I guess if black wants to play for a win, then he should play the move g6. And now the queen has to retreat to h4, attacking the f6 pawn. And now black has a nice move with d5, attacking the bishop on c4 and making room for the light squared bishop. And now white cannot take the pawn on f6 because after a rook to f8, queen takes e5, black just simply captures the bishop and is up piece. This is not what we want. And instead, white should play e takes d5. But after knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, queen takes f6, rook to f8, queen takes e5, queen takes e5, and bishop takes e5, we reach a position where 
why it's actually up a pawn but um, black got um, enough compensation i guess and game could continue with um, knight to c6 attacking our bishop so the bishop has to retreat let's say bishop to c3 and after bishop to c5 black got some real threats you know right now he's attacking the f2 pawn and he will bring his bishop most likely to g4 and castle queen, queen side so his rook will participate in the game and yeah black is down a pawn but he really get active play and if you want to know more about this position check out the game Skellig vs Ironmas played in 2007. I guess that this position is roughly equal but black's definitely the one with the fun. So yeah let's go back to the game. In the game black played the move knight to g6 and yeah it's probably understandable that um, black played this move because if you're not prepared in the line then um, I guess what I've just showed you earlier isn't that easy to find you know and knight to g6 looks logic right but here uh, white got another nice move and this is f4 just opening up all lines for the attack you know and well what should I say black took the pawn and actually this is even the best move and here white played the move a3 attacking the bishop on b4 and black responded with the best move d5 Black is willing to give back a pawn, but therefore he'll um, speed up his development. You can see that now um, the light squared bishop can go out in one move. And yeah, white took the pawn on d5 with the bishop, and after c6, and the retreat of the bishop, black made a mistake. He played a move queen to a5. Um, his idea is that if white would take the queen, then he simply can just recapture and this position is actually better for black because um, black is up a pawn and without the queens on the board it's pretty tough for white to get any attack started you know and i mean what is this bishop doing uh, he's just uh, looking at black's pawn chain that's not too good the pawn in f4 is guarded by the knight and yeah I mean, black doesn't have any problems. He can develop his bishop, then the knight, you know. He even can uh, have a nice outpost on e5. And so I think that this position is just better for black. And... But white will play another move that I will show you soon enough. Before, I just want to mention that in this position, a better move for black would have been the retreat of the bishop, so bishop d6. And after knight to f3, queen to e7 and castling, we reach a position that is roughly balanced, you know. Black got a pawn, but I think that white got some compensation. You know, white has plans of playing, for example, d4, knight c3, rook e1. You can also play moves like knight to h4, knight to h5. And his bishops are lined up pretty well for an attack on the king's side. And even the queen is already on the king's side. Even the rook um, is on the f file. So I think that white got a fun, but black's actually up a pawn, and I guess that this position is roughly equal. So anyway, let's go back to the game. In the game, black decided to play the move queen to a5, and as I already showed you, it's a logical move, but it has a downside, and this is the move e5. And this is actually the only move that works for white, everything else would be worse, and... but e5 saves the day, right? And here... Black played the blunder, he played the move bishop to e7. I mean, the position wasn't already too good for black. Um, white's already better. But I guess the best move for black would have been bishop to c5. But after bishop to c3, queen to b6, e takes f6, g takes f6, and knight to e2, I think that white must be better, you know? I mean, look at this beautiful bishops. The knight is pinned. This knight can come to f4. I mean, you probably don't even need to castle, you know? You just um, step aside and bring a rook to e1. And yeah, you just simply start an amazing attack against black. And the computer gives it already as plus two for white. And I really have to agree that this is a great position. Anyway, let's go back to the game. In the game, black played the move bishop to e7. And as I already told you, this is a big blunder. And I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out why bishop to e7 is so bad. Try to figure out what's white's best move in this position. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. 
two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Right now, black screen isn't defended. And the only thing that stops us from taking the queen is our pawn on e5. So try to find a good way to move the pawn on e5 so that we can take the queen in the next move. With this hint in mind, I give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. Right move is a stunning move. Bishop to f7 check. And black really cannot take the bishop because then you just simply have to move e6 check, attacking the king and the queen at the same time. So it doesn't matter what black plays. Let's say if bishop takes e6 and you just simply grab off the queen and guess who's better? White is. A better move for black would have been the move king to f8. But here we have another nice move and this is simply just taking off the knight on g6 because black cannot recapture the bishop because then his rook would be loose. And so yeah, white just simply won a piece and black resigned. So this was a trap. I hope you liked today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So see you next time. And it's again, time to checkmate.